right, well, uh, hey everyone, I want to welcome you back to our channel. Uh, today I have the pleasure of speaking with Matthew Bodoff, he's a technical expert in uh, composites and resins from Ineos Composites. Uh, we're going to discuss understanding the relationship between resins and quartz countertops, uh, here to answer some questions and provide insight about resins and the role in, produ uh, in the production of quartz countertops. Uh, Matthew, thank you for joining us today. Uh, no, really thanks, Evan, for coming. having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Could you give us a brief introduction to yourself and your experience? Sure. So I work for Ineos Composites, which is one of the largest global manufacturers of resins for a variety of industries, including the quartz countertop industry. Um, I have 20 years experience in composites and resins, um, and I've been kind of directly working in the engineered stone world for the past few years. Um, and my goal is to kind of help bring kind of best practices to our customers and partners all over the world. Great, great. Thank you very much. So uh, lots of experience. That's great. A lot of people can learn from from Matthew. I've learned a ton from you over the years as well. And I, uh, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge and information there as well. So uh, today, just want to kind of start with the basics. And in layman's terms, uh, help us understand what what is resin and what purpose does it serve? Yeah, so, so at its most basic, resin is a type of glue that's designed to hold all of the natural quartz particles together. Um, sometimes the easiest way to think of it is in terms of baking ingredients, which are most people are familiar with, and think of it as the liquid part of the mix designed to hold all the flour together. Um, and then just like a cake, once that engineered stone slab is manufactured, it cannot go back into being flour and water again separately. Wow. Well, that makes, that makes sense. Uh, I like how you use it in baking <laughs> terms as well. I, I think that that's some good example of the product and how it's made as well. So um, in regards to resin, I think this is a, a area where uh, maybe misconception or maybe even just lack of knowledge, you know, that's out there and information. But uh, from what I understand, there's different qualities of resin and they serve different purposes. So you know, what, what is it that makes a resin a lower quality versus a higher quality? Sure. So I think one of the, the most basics is that there's different options in terms of the key raw materials that go into making polyester resins. You can use different types of acids and glycols, which are used in the chemical reaction to make it. And, you know, we know as experts in this industry that different types of those raw materials will impart different qualities onto the slab of, uh, you know, of quartz. And those could be things like scratch resistance, UV performance, gloss retention. And so, you know, I think a quality manufacturer makes sure that they're always using the right blend of those key raw materials and not necessarily what's the cheapest. Um, these, these chemicals are typically, you know, globally sourced, globally priced from one quarter to the next, they could be priced differently. Um, and we find the lower quality manufacturers will often, you know, spot buy based on whatever's cheap is that month, a particular acid or glycol and use that in their formula. And it, the slab will look the same coming out of the factory. So no one's on the wiser, but we know that it actually does have a difference. Um, and I think the other, the other big thing is the batch to batch consistency, you know, quality manufacturers really make sure that that formula that they're supplying is the exact same every day, every batch, um, and have very tight tolerances on the finished product, which means a consistent, you know, quartz slab to you and your customers. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes, that makes a big difference too. And being a distributor of different types of quartz ourselves, you know, we get to hear a lot of feedback about either challenges or struggles or, even potential claims. And so really yep. understanding where that comes from is really important. I think that this is uh, a, a big area for us to be focusing on for people to understand that this does play a significant role in, you know, how the quartz countertops are made and how they uh, uphold themselves. So that's great. So <clears throat> just, you know, kind of digging a little deeper on that by using a lower quality resin, for example, what, what, what about that? What issues can happen if they're using lower quality quartz or lower quality resins, excuse me, in the manufacturing process of quartz countertops? Yeah, so I think there's different issues that affect the fabricator of the slab and then the end homeowner customer differently. 
from a fabricator standpoint, I think things that will affect them the most are cracking of the slabs and the speed at which they can run their fabrication equipment. So generally better quality rabs, uh, better quality slabs, excuse me, can be cut quite quickly and efficiently. Whereas a lower quality slab, the saws need to be run slower to avoid any cracking or warping of the slab. Um, and then from the, the customer, the homeowner standpoint, the biggest things we see are premature yellowing of the slab, especially if it's in a kitchen that gets a lot of natural sunlight or water and food staining. Um, kind of the number one area you tend to see a lot of staining is around the faucet openings where water tends to pool up um, and lower quality slabs will start to discolor there quickly. Hmm. And, you know, to think about a, a kitchen renovation, bathroom renovation, the whole project is not inexpensive. And, and quite frankly, I've never met anybody who loved the process. Uh, we have customers all the time who come in and just can't wait to get through the process. So to really go and put a, a product in there that may not last or have the durability or yeah. even, even discolor, uh, you know, really would be something to say, you know, Hey, do I really want to look at my countertop and, and have to change it in three to five years from exactly. now because it, it just wasn't, uh, we were, we didn't know about this information. So that, I mean, we, we have to face it as Americans, the kitchen has almost become the center of the household, right? It's where everyone yep. gathers and, you know, that countertop gets a lot of use. It gets a lot of, uh, you know, day-to-day -day use as well as the, a lot of regular cleaning and you want uh, to buy a quality product that's going to withstand the rigors of kind of your daily life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so resin, uh, you know, oftentimes I think when people think, of course, they don't really think of the resin aspect of it. Um, and, and that's okay. That's what we're here for today is to hopefully bring that to, to the attention because it is a major component in, you know, these countertops as we're, as we're learning about today as well. Um, how important is the resin to the overall structure and appearance of the quartz countertop? Sure. So, so, so we obviously like to think it's very important, and we've done a lot of history and studies to really understand what are the impacts that resin brings to the slab. Things like the color, the background color, and the aesthetics, most of that actually comes from the quartz particles themselves that the manufacturer is choosing. And there's different quartz sands that are mined all over the world that can give different aesthetics. But the resin is where the the benefits of quartz that a customer, when they buy quartz versus other surfacing materials, they're looking for ease of use, ease of cleaning, you know, high temperature durability. Those are the things that are actually imparted by the resin itself. Um, and so that's why it's important. Again, like a quality resin is going to make sure that the key features and benefits of why homeowners love quartz and why it's been the fastest growing surfacing material for the last decade or so, why, you know, the resin is the, the, the thing that's actually imparting those benefits on the slab. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, definitely a, a value, you know, valuable point there. Uh, quartz has made a big impact in the market just in general. And, uh, and I think the biggest thing is a lot of people go into it thinking we want something maintenance free. We want something yep. durable. We're looking for something that's going to last. And so, you know, really understanding these things we're talking about today it, it will help provide those solutions to somebody looking for their, uh, for their kitchen. They want a kitchen that's going to last. Uh, yes. People aren't looking to turn their kitchens around every two, three years. So really it's important to, uh, to understand that and, and how it's going to perform. So uh, thank you for that information. Well, yeah. um, another thing I've always found interesting is is because uh, I've I've been working with quartz since uh, probably back in uh, I want to say two thousand eight ish, maybe even slightly before then. Uh, is I've learned a lot about how it's made, what's in it, and and so I think it's interesting. But can you share with us a little bit about how much resin is typically used in a quartz countertop? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's interesting because as much as we'd like to talk about how important the resin is to the properties of the slab and the manufacturing process, it's actually a fairly small percentage uh, by weight of the overall slab. Typically, it's in the 10 to 15 percent by weight range. Um, you know, a couple of years ago when large particle countertops like the terrazzo look was more popular, those were able to get away with lower percentages of resin. But now that everything's moving towards white backgrounds and ultra white slabs, we tend to see a little more resin used. So it's even more important with today's modern aesthetics that a quality resin and a quality manufacturer is making these engineered stone slabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, a valuable 
a point to mention on that is, you know, we talk about the percentage by weight, not by volume. And I think that's where a common misconception can be had. So even by weight, that actually really is more resin uh, than it would be if it was by volume based on correct force versus resin. So, yeah. so it, it is a significant product. It is a uh, something that has to be considered when selecting your quartz. I think that's a valuable aspect of that as well. So thank you for that. Um, with that being said, based on the resin, are there any quartz colors that you'd say are more prone to issue, whether it's, you know, the ultra whites or the jet blacks? I think I think the good news is, is that for your customers, for the end customer and the homeowner, um, almost all colors will behave in the same way and they shouldn't notice any in-service issues, regardless if it's a very jet black or a very bright white. The issues tend to come up more in the manufacturing process. And so they're affected, um, black, especially blacks and dark grays tend to be a little more finicky during the production process. But again, a high quality manufacturer is going to catch those things and make sure they don't go out the door as a finished product to the end customer. Again, this is all about you know, really understanding where the slabs come from and who a quality manufacturer is to make sure they have good quality control systems in place. Sure, sure. No, that makes sense. And I would also uh, have to assume that when you're talking about a, you know, like an ultra white or a white color, utilizing a lower quality uh, resin, for example, is probably going to see discoloration happening faster as well sure yeah i mean obviously the the brighter that white is uh, the, you know especially if you get a kitchen where um if we're talking about sunlight uv damage a kitchen that has maybe just partial sunlight on part of your island or part of your countertop the brighter white that slab is the more you're going to notice it changing colors maybe versus other parts of your kitchen sure sure that's that right there is a key component in my mind as to you know why you want to pick something that's gonna look good and, and last when, yeah. when it comes to that yeah for <laughs> sure so well, great to know on that as well. And so, you know, from from an expert's opinion here, uh, what advice would you give to a homeowner about what they should look for when they're buying a quartz countertop? Yeah, so right. So, so the average homeowner is it's not going to be able to go to the factories and see how these things are made. So, the most important thing is to really work with a local manufacturer, a local fabricator, who they've done their homework. They've gone and really understand where their supply is coming from. What's the quality of the slabs? What's the quality procedures in place from the manufacturer that the slabs are coming from? Um, and then be able to really speak to the features and benefits of one slab manufacturer versus is another you know a company like quality marble will will have multiple brands in-house and i think a good distributor and fabricator such as yourselves will really understand what are the features and benefits of each brand and that they offer the consumer and be able to articulate those especially that's a big difference compared to when you go to like a, um, a home depot or a lowe's or a big box store where they may not be as as much of a material expert mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I, I, I believe that, you know, wholeheartedly. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today is because uh, we've, you know, really learned so much about understanding this aspect. And, you know, for, for our company here at Quality Marble Granite, it's really important that we provide the consumer with the education and the knowledge, yeah. because at the end of the day, uh, they don't really know they're coming and looking at products. And unfortunately, when you see quartz and you shop by price, oftentimes you can get what you pay for. And that's, that's the downside to it. So, you know, we, we focus on really making sure the product we're bringing in, we know it, we know where it comes from and we understand how it's going to last over time. So that's, that's really uh, uh, an important aspect for us too. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that as well. So um, is there anything else, any, any other last thoughts that you, uh, you think, you'd share with uh, the general public here today, or even, even, even fabricators in regards to understanding, you know, uh, the better resins and, and. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think, you know, quartz, I truly believe in this product. I think it's a great product that, you know, has it, the, 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 Aesthetic options are almost limitless. You know, whites are very popular now, but the grays and blacks are beautiful. Um, and it's just something that, you know, isn't easy to do with other surfacing materials. Um, but unlike a more natural material, like, like natural stone, where you, maybe you're expecting some defects in a slab or there's some natural inclusions in a slab, and that's part of the beauty of it, people truly expect a quartz slab to be almost flawless. And that's why I think it's critical to understand, you know, what you're buying and, and from 
the fabricator to the distributor and then the manufacturer all the way through the supply chain um, to make sure that quality is being taken into consideration and not just trying to drive everything down on the lowest, you know, lowest pennies. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's 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 a great point. And uh, we do a lot of uh, explanation going back to your, your baking. You know, you yeah. talked about baking earlier and we, we talk about that, too, where, you know, um, I think one of the contexts that I put it in that even my kids really understood was when I said, if you're going out and buying a chocolate chip cookie and, you know, and, and I have one for one for three dollars or three for one dollar, most people are going to go for the three for one dollar until they realize that that product was perhaps made with salt because salt was cheaper than sugar at the time. Yeah, exactly. Now you're not going to see that in that chocolate chip cookie, but you sure will when you taste it. And, yeah. uh, and that's one of the things really understanding what's in it, that, that makes it, you know, last and durable and everything. Yeah. Unfortunately, unlike, you know, maybe like electronics where you may notice after its first use, if things aren't working right, very often with kitchen countertops, you don't notice there's a problem until months or even a couple of years down the road. Um, and that's why it's really important to do your homework and work with reputable companies from day one to make sure that you're investing in something in your home that's truly going to last and look beautiful for as long as you want it to. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that's a great comment there. We're not talking about the padding that's going under your carpet. We're talking about your countertops where your yeah. family meals, Thanksgiving, everything is had there and, and you want to make sure you have a beautiful kitchen that you invest in that's going to last and continue. So exactly. That's, that's wonderful. Well, well, thank you, Matthew, for sharing your, your, your expertise with today, us today. I really, really appreciate it. And, you know, I hope everybody can gain a better understanding of this here, uh, how important it is to use a high quality resin. I think that's extremely uh, valuable in that aspect. And when you are shopping for your quartz countertops, you know, understanding how resin does play a critical role. Uh, in both the structure and the appearance and, and the durability, how it's going to last. So really choosing that is important. So, uh, you know, for us here, if, if, if anyone uh, listening today is, is in the market uh, for a quartz countertop, make sure you take into consideration the quality of the quartz uh, and the resin and, and really working with a company that you can ask these questions to and they can they can respond. That, that speaks highly uh, to the education and, and uh, uh, the knowledge that's going to be passed on there. So, um if you're looking for quartz in the Inland Empire, we would ask you to please, you know, check out check out Quality Marble and Granite. We definitely uh, uh, work to provide the best products that we can for our customers as well. And, uh, and Matthew, thank you so much for joining us today and, and answering those questions. Uh, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Really appreciate that as well. And you know, make sure to like, comment, follow, or subscribe to our channel uh, for more informative informative videos. Um, we're going to continue to provide more information to help the consumers really select you know the best products for their home so we thank you very much and we wish you a quality day